Secondly, let us explain about the valve body. In this chapter, let us deal with the characteristics and internal structure of valve body, which is core part of hydraulic control. Outside valve body has four pressure control valves and one switch valve. In case of five speed automatic transaxle, pressure control valve is additionally installed for the fail safe valve C and reduction brake of sub transaxle. Inside valve has manual valve, which sets oil path by the shift lever position. And it also has the damper clutch control valve, which operates pressure in damper clutch operation. It also has the regulator valve to control overall line pressure of automatic transaxle and torque converter valve to control the pressure inside the torque converter. And finally, fail-safe valve A and fail-safe valve B to prevent the interlock among operating elements. Manual valve of HIVEC automatic transaxle changes position by the shift lever position. Unlike other models, manual valve positions are simplified to four instead of seven. Even though it has the seven shift positions, namely P, R, N, D, 3, 2, L. Be careful about the steel ball and damping valve positions in valve body disassembly. Refer to workshop manual for assembly position. Let us briefly explain fail-safe valve. Fail-safe valve A is safety equipment to prevent simultaneous operation of two brakes and one clutch, namely low and reverse brake, second brake, and overdrive clutch. Fail-safe valve A prevents it not electronically, but mechanically and hydraulically. Since those two above mentioned brakes share the reaction plate, they cannot operate simultaneously in any case. If they operate simultaneously, it may cause automatic transaxle interlock and serious damage to the mechanical system, including the inside bearing of automatic transaxle. If the oil pressure is supplied simultaneously to second brake and low and reverse brake due to the internal damage or breakdown of oil pressure circuit, oil pressure of low and reverse brake is automatically released by the hydraulic circuit of fail-safe valve A connected to each chamber.
Failsafe valve B prevents simultaneous operation of two clutches and one brake, namely underdrive clutch, overdrive clutch, and second brake. If the oil pressure is supplied simultaneously to second brake, underdrive clutch and overdrive clutch due to the internal damage or breakdown of oil pressure circuit, oil pressure of second brake is automatically released by the hydraulic circuit of fail-safe valve B connected to each chamber. Failsafe valve C is applied only to the five-speed automatic transaxle, which functions to supply the oil pressure to direct clutch from switch valve in usual cases. If direct clutch and reduction brake operate simultaneously, interlock happens, which should be prevented. Direct clutch functions to connect output of main transaxle to the sub-transaxle by one-to-one -one ratio. On the other hand, reduction brake functions to reduce the speed once again in sub-transaxle. If the oil pressure is supplied simultaneously to reduction brake and direct clutch due to the internal damage or breakdown of oil pressure circuit, the hydraulic circuit of fail-safe valve C connected to each chamber automatically releases oil pressure of direct clutch. Let's look at the oil pressure flow in fail-safe condition. If fail-safe condition is met, power supply to all solenoid valves is disconnected because of auto control relay turn off. Since all solenoid valves turn off, if the driver selects driving forward range, oil pressure is supplied to all clutches and brakes, except reverse clutch, where oil pressure is mechanically supplied. Though interlock may happen, oil pressure of low and reverse brake is released by the failsafe valve A and oil pressure of second brake is released by the failsafe valve B. As a result, oil pressure is supplied only to underdrive clutch and overdrive clutch. Since it becomes operating element of third speed, third speed driving is enabled mechanically. Diamond SP3 automatic transaxle fluid is applied to the Hyvec automatic transaxle. Now let us explain the hydraulic pressure control. In this chapter, various control logics for the oil pressure control of Hyvec automatic transaxle will be explained. Clutch to clutch shift control method of HIVEC automatic transaxle is as follows. TCM calculates the appropriate oil pressure receiving speed signals of input and output shaft. Output signals are transmitted to four or five solenoid valves depending on the four speed or five speed automatic transaxles respectively. Then, shift is performed by controlling clutch or brake of release and connection simultaneously. So the exact torque capacity of both clutches is calculated for the precise control in release and combination clutches. Response becomes smooth and quick by preventing run-up and brake interlock during gear shift. Solenoid valve is applied to each clutch so that the skip shift is allowed. Its merit is reduced time 
of overall shift completion. Feedback shift control feedbacks solenoid valve duty ratio so that the speed change of input shaft approaches to predetermined target change ratio in shift to each gear. So, it is possible to control ideally the sudden fluctuation of torques in transfer. Of course, the shifting feel is fairly improved. Even when the output performance is changed due to the old engine or automatic transaxle, stable shift is enhanced by the automatic duty ratio compensation of solenoid valve. Feedback control is applied not only in driving condition, but also for the start from the stopped condition. Namely, feedback shift control is adapted in N to R or N to D. Since the mutual control is applied, the most desirable injection timing is requested based on the various information like current speed, gear shift, and engine torques, and so on. ECM adjusts the engine torques for smooth shift and increase in shift feeling. Finally, let us explain about the damper clutch control. It is composed of minor slip range control and full lockup control. Minor slip range control means the slight slip in low RPM range and full lockup means full connection in high RPM range. According to the control, fuel economy is improved and driving is quiet. Of course, there are some models that do not have minor slip range control depending on the torque converter specification of automatic transaxle model. The conditions for the damper clutch operation are as follows. Driving forward range, more than second speed gear, and the automatic transaxle fluid temperature must be higher than 125 degrees centigrade. Not in N to D, nor N to R control. Temperature of automatic transaxle fluid, more than 50 degrees centigrade under full lockup. Temperature of automatic transaxle fluid more than 70 degrees centigrade under minor slip rain. The system is not under fail safe third gear hold condition. This video consists of a system structure, electrical parts inspection, IFEC control logic, and diagnosis. Let's begin with the system structure. In this chapter, we explain input and output elements by engine management system and overall system components.
Input elements are the input shaft speed sensor, output shaft speed sensor, automatic transaxle fluid temperature sensor, transaxle range switch, and brake switch. For the vehicle with a sports mode, signals such as engine RPM, mass airflow signal, engine coolant temperature, and throttle position sensor are input to TCM along with a mode switch, upshift switch, and downshift switch. Some signals are input from the sensor or switches. On the other hand, other signals like engine RPM and throttle position sensor are input by the communication with an ECM. Output elements are an automatic transaxle control relay, damper clutch control solenoid valve, low and reverse solenoid valve, second brake solenoid valve, underdrive solenoid valve, and overdrive solenoid valve. In case of a 5-speed automatic transaxle, reduction brake solenoid valve is added as an output element. While the traction control system is operating, traction control system operation signal is input to TCM to prevent upshift and downshift. Besides, following are the input signals to TCM through a CAN communication. Engine RPM signal is input from a crankshaft position sensor to control oil pressure shift pattern in gear shift. Throttle open angle is input from throttle position sensor to control shift timing, damper clutch operation, and oil pressure control in gear shift. Engine torque is detected from a mass airflow sensor for the accurate oil pressure control in gear shift. Vehicle speed sensor signal is input to detect an output shaft speed sensor failure. When the air conditioner is on, triple switch signal is input to compensate the engine load. The engine coolant temperature sensor signal is input for an emission gas reduction shift pattern control. Now let us explain the electrical parts inspection. In this chapter, we would like to explain the characteristics and inspection method of sensor and actuators, which are input and output elements of the system. The input shaft speed sensor and output shaft speed sensor are open collector type of hall sensors. They are installed on the underdrive clutch and transfer drive gear respectively, and they detect the input shaft RPM and output shaft RPM. However, in the case of five-speed automatic transaxle, final output comes from the sub-transaxle. So the output shaft speed sensor detects the rotation speed of tone wheel, which is installed on the retainer of direct clutch. Three wires are connected to the sensor. As for the characteristics of the three wires, 12 volts for the operation, 5 volts for the output voltage from the TCM and the ground. The sensor receives 12 volts when the ignition key is on and 5 volts is output from the TCM. When a tone wheel rotates, the sensor output voltage changes to 5 volts or 0 volts repeatedly. TCM reads this repeated low and high signal and recognizes the RPM. The high voltage should be over 4.8 volts and the low voltage should be less than 0.8 volts. If the low voltage is higher than 0.8 volts, check the ground condition. The output signal frequency increases as the rotation speed gets faster. 
Another checking method is to measure the voltage from the sensor harness side with the ignition key on. 12 volts from the pin number 3. 0.8 volts or less from pin number 1. 5 volts from pin number 2. If the voltage from pin number 2 is 0 volts, then it might be a TCM failure or wire harness trouble. In addition, internal resistance should be higher than 1 mega ohm. 1 mega ohm means that it should be kept insulated. Now let us deal with the automatic transaxle fluid temperature sensor. An automatic transaxle fluid temperature sensor is a negative thermal coefficient type thermistor in which the resistance decreases as the automatic transaxle fluid temperature increases. Output voltage also decreases with the increase of the automatic transaxle fluid temperature. In other words, as the output voltage approaches 5 volts, the automatic transaxle fluid temperature becomes lower. Otherwise, if the output voltage approaches 0 volts, the automatic transaxle fluid temperature becomes higher. Resistance changes according to temperature are shown on the screen. The main purpose of the automatic transaxle fluid temperature signal are as follows. First, to detect the operational ranges of damper clutch. Second, to use it as a base data for a variable control of automatic transaxle fluid temperature. Third, to use it as oil pressure control information in gear shift. Now, let us deal with the transaxle range switch. Since it allows the engine start only in a parking and neutral position, as a rotary touch type, it is called inhibitor switch. Now let us explain the solenoid valve, representative output factor. Three-way and normal open type solenoid valves are selected, which are all pulse with modulator by performing duty control. There is no on-off solenoid valve. Since all solenoids except a damper clutch control solenoid valve use a comparatively high frequency of over 60 Hertz, meaning more precise control is available. It shows the characteristics of the internal resistance of 2.6 ohms to 3.4 ohms at 20 degrees centigrade and the surge voltage of 30 volts or more. Duty control of solenoid valves is decided depending on the operating element at each speed range. If 100% of duty ratio is shown on the high scan, solenoid valve is on. In other words, clutches or brakes are not operating because oil pressure is drained out to the oil pan. If the duty ratio on high scan is 0%, solenoid valve is off and oil pressure is supplied to each operating element. Note that on state of solenoid valve does not mean zero volts. As a matter of fact, chopping control is performed, 2000 Hertz of pulse signal is output. While shifting, a corresponding solenoid is on a duty control, so the high surge voltage is generated with a frequency of approximately 60 Hz. فراموش نکنید که توی کانال سابسکرایب کنید، زنگوله رو به صدا در بیارید و کانال رو با دیگر دوستانتون به اشتراک بذارید. تا ویدیوی بعدی روز روزگار خوش.